All right, guys, we're doing a tutorial number four. This one, we're going to use that same circuit as we had in the previous video. Uh, but now, instead of just turning LED on and off, we'll have the program where it flashes it on and off at different frequencies. And again, we're going to be making use of pin 13. Remember that there is an LED that's on the Arduino that turns on at the same time as pin 13 goes high. Uh, so you'll find that this LED and your external LED turn on with this circuit. Uh, this, the components that we need today are, again, I'm going to use a 330 ohm resistor. That's the one that I had in my package. You can use a 220 ohm. Anything that's less than 1,000 ohms, you should be fine. That's just there so you don't cook your LED or your output from your Arduino. Uh, I'm going to make use of a red LED, and then I'm going to make use of uh, some jumper wires as well. Now, in the previous video, I was using fritzing in order to make the diagram on how to hook up my LED with my resistor. Um, and I was just blown away by this program, um, but then I couldn't figure out how to simulate it. Uh, and in trying to find how to simulate it, I came across this guy right here. So AutoCAD has a new, um, a new program called Tinkercad. So if you just type in tinkercad.com and create a login credentials, then you can log in and you can make circuits and you can simulate them. So here I've just gone down to circuits here, uh, I've created a new circuit and we'll just open this bad boy up. Very cool, eh? So it's got everything we need here. So if I go in here and say tinker this, cool, eh? So I've got my Arduino Uno here. I've been able to drop in some leads here. I've got my 330 ohm resistor. I've got my red LED here. Uh, where I found all these guys was in components. So this one's even cooler than the other, the other program. It's got uh, all your different discrete components that you need, right? So I've grabbed the Arduino Uno and brought it in. Uh, where was the LED? LED was here, dropped in the resistor, and then I was able to change the resistor um, values as well. And as soon as I've done that, I can go to my code editor. I can drop in my code editor, and look at this. This is really cool. So my Arduino code is over here. But over here is something like very similar to Scratch, where you've got that block programming. Um, so you can grab each of these instructions over here and bring them in and drop them in. And uh, I'm wondering whether, I haven't done all that much research on the Arduino, but I'm wondering whether the Arduino is moving more towards this Scratch and less towards this, or whether it's going to have the capability for both of them. Um, but this is awesome. You can just drag these guys back all the way over. It's very similar to Scratch or the Lego Mindstorms robots and stuff like that. So once you've got your code in there, you can then go to your simulation. And this guy is going to flash the LED on and off. And there it is. Cool, eh? And look at this. That internal LED for pin 13 is flashing on as well. Really, really cool. All right, so let's dive into the Arduino Uno IDE again. Uh, and we'll figure out how to create this delay between the on and the off on our LED. Okay, so here's our program from the previous video uh, where we set the pin mode and we said that uh, pin 13 was going to be an output. And remember that in the void setup, this guy, these instructions right here just run once, whereas below in the void loop, these run repeatedly and that there's, they'll cycle down all the way down to the bottom and then start back at the top there. Both the void setup and the void loop, you'll notice, start with an open parenthesis and then end with a closed parenthesis there. So right now I've got the LED going high, uh, and you can just make out that the LED is fired on here, and the internal LED for pin 13 is also firing on there as well. If I want this guy to go low, then I can just change this to low. Again, it has to be in caps there. Uh, and then I can verify it. Take a little bit of time to verify here. Okay, and then we'll upload it to our Arduino board. So you'll notice the, the TX and RX LEDs are gonna flash at us, and then the LED goes out. Beautiful. Okay, so we can turn this guy uh, high, meaning five volts is applied to the LED and low, meaning zero volts is applied to the LED. The five volts obviously having the LED on and the zero volts having the LED off. Now I prefer to use high and low 
so that I, you know, physically can read that I'm putting that, that output high or putting it low. Uh, but remember that in binary, if something's going low, it'll be represented by a zero. If something's going high, it'll be represented by a one. So we should also be able to, instead of putting high here, we should be able to put a one denoting that we want that output to go high. And that should also turn our LED on. So let's do that. Let's upload to our Arduino. Beautiful. Cool, eh? So you can put high or a one, or you can put low or a zero. If I change this to a zero and then upload it, then we should find that this guy goes off. Beautiful. Excellent. Okay, so now let's move on and let's get this guy to start to flash. Okay, so we now know that we can put this guy high and low. So let's change this back to uh, high, going for the 5 volts. And then below, we'll do a digital write. And you'll notice here that the W is uppercase. And then you can see that as soon as I finish that off, it goes orange there. And I've already said above in my pin mode that I want pin 13 to be an output there. So again, you can determine whether that pin 13 is going to be an input or an output. And then we're going to make that guy go low. Again, we're going to do uppercase there. Okay, if I do that in lowercase, it does not work whatsoever. Okay, so uppercase, and you'll see that that turns blue. And then at the end of all of our instructions, we need to put in a semicolon. Excellent. Okay, now, but this thing's going to go through uh, thousands of times a second trying to figure out uh, what's in our program and then firing that off to um, our Arduino. So what we need to do is we need to create a delay in between the high and the low between the five volts going to the LED and the zero volts going to the LED. So in between these guys, let's put in a delay. So we're literally going to put in delay. Okay, you'll see that it goes orange there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this in brackets and we're going to put a thousand. Then we'll close the brackets. And again, what we need to do to close off this instruction here is to put a semicolon. So right there, we're going to create a delay and the delay here is in milliseconds. So again, we're going to put two backslashes there if we need to uh, put in anything to describe what we're doing on each line. And we'll say it provides a delay for a thousand milliseconds or obviously one second. Okay, this guy right here, we could say um, sends five volts DC out to the LED and over here obviously this guy is going to send zero volts Easy enough. excellent okay again as it scrolls down here it's going to digitally write five volts to the LED then we're gonna have a delay for a second then it's gonna go off now below, before it cycles back up to the top, let's put another delay in there between those guys. So again, we're going to put delay. We'll put a delay for a thousand milliseconds or one second. We've already done um, this right here, right? We've already told what that line is doing. Um, and you can see that, oh, let's see, is everything cool there? Looks good. Okay, let's verify that, make sure everything's good. Sweet, it's done compiling here. Everything looks all right. So let's upload it to our Arduino board and we should find that that LED starts flashing at us now. Cool, eh? I don't know if you can make it out just in, uh, yeah, you can make it out in the light there. Looks good, eh? So that LED is flashing and again, that pin 13, it also has that internal LED here. So if you've just purchased the Arduino board so far and you haven't got a starter kit yet, uh, you can start off with this project just using that internal LED there. Excellent, okay, so we're gonna do one more thing here. Um, we've created this great little program where we can flash this LED on and off. Uh, we can change the delay, we haven't done that yet, so um, say we wanted to change this to uh, two seconds. Then we can change either of the delays there. 
we can upload that to our Arduino and then you should find that the flashing rate changes. There you go, on for two seconds and off for two seconds. On for two seconds and off for two seconds. Okay, so now we've got this great little program here that flashes the LED on and off every two seconds now. Um, but the problem is, is that if we were to change this pin, like say we needed pin 13 for something else, so we wanted to move the LED over to a different pin, well, we have 13 all the way through here. So what we need to do is we need to create a global variable next. So this program works great right now. But the problem with this is that we can't change the delay value. Every time we change the delay, like we'd have to physically go in here and change this guy and our delay off as well. Um, and changing the pin, well, every time that we change the pin, we'd have to change every instance in the program as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some global variables up here in the top, and we're going to make use of an integer, int. Now, the reason why we're using an integer is because we have discrete inputs here. We have 0 through 13 as our discrete inputs or our discrete outputs there. It's not like we have pin 2.5 or 5.5 or anything like that. So we're going to make use of the integer now. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, that... Um, Let's do underscore here. We're going to say the LED pin is equal to terminal number 13. And again, remember that at the end of everything here, we need to put a semicolon. Okay, so I'm now saying that my LED pin is equal to 13. And as soon as I do that, um, I can write in here. So I'm going to copy this right here, edit, copy. And every place that I have pin 13, I'm going to now paste in that integer value. So LED pin right here as well. Beautiful. There we go. Uh, let's compile it and make sure that everything is cool. Looks good. Okay, and let's upload it to our Arduino here. And do I still have the same delay? Yeah, I still have two seconds as the delay there. So we'll upload that guy, and we won't see any difference whatsoever in the circuit. You can still see that it's on for two seconds and off two se for two seconds, on for two seconds and off for two seconds. I'm connected into pin 13, uh, but say I wanted to move it over to pin 14. If I move this guy over, pin 14, sorry, uh, let's go for another digital output. So let's go for uh, pin number 12 here. So once I put it into 12, then you can see that it's no longer flashing. Right now, the Arduino has pin 13 as the one where that signal is coming out of. But the beauty of creating a global variable here is that if I change this now to a 12, then every one of these guys below, every LED pin now, uh, will now equal 12. So I'll upload that, and we should find that because I'm connected in here to pin number 12, we should have the LED flashing on and off for two seconds each now. Beautiful. Cool, eh? So now we've got a global variable now. Uh, we've labeled it LED pin, so we're actually telling, uh, you know, in every instance down here what that pin is controlling. And if we just needed to move that over one point, then we just need to change one instance in the program rather than changing every instance in our program here. It's not like we have a massive program. We only have to change it three times. But if you got into a larger program, that would be a pain in the butt to try and change each one of those all the way through. So we'll create a global variable there. And then we can change this at any point, upload it to the Arduino, and then we can make use of that other terminal there. Excellent. Okay. Say, let's do one more thing, guys. Say we wanted to change the uh, the actual delay there. So let's do integer, uh, and we'll put on. Um, let's see. We'll do our delay time. And let's do delay time on equal to, let's do a 1,000 milliseconds for now. And let's also create an integer for our delay time off. 
You'll notice that I'm using um, underscores here. If you just put a, a space, it's not going to like it whatsoever. So I'm creating an integer for each of my on value and my off value there. And then below here, um, now the reason why I'm doing that is because then I can change my delay time on or my delay time off um, once rather than changing it in every instance within my program. So here I have a delay of uh, 2000 milliseconds. So I'm going to get rid of this guy and I'm going to type in and rather than making a mistake, I'm just going to copy this guy and drop that bad boy right in here. Beautiful. Okay, so that's my delay time on. Looks good. We're not sure how many seconds because it depends on the value up here now. And then right here, instead of having a, just a discrete value of 2000, I'm now going to put in my delay time off there. Again, I'm going to copy and then paste that bad boy in there. There we go. And that should provide me with an opportunity to change the values up here, which will change each of these global variables below. So let's upload that guy here. We'll find that it changes from a two second delay to a one second delay now. Beautiful. Okay. And now if I wanted to change my delay time, say I wanted my delay time on for three seconds and then off for one second. Again, these are milliseconds. So when I change that to 3000, then it'll change it to three seconds. So now let's upload that to the Arduino. Now we should see that it's on for three seconds and off for one second. On for three seconds and off for one second. Beautiful. Very cool. All right, guys, that's pretty good for uh, this lesson. So what we've done here is we created, first we created a program using the LED pin number 13, and we were flashing that LED on and off by creating a high and a low, and in between each of those guys, we we're creating a delay. The value that we put in for the delay was in milliseconds there, and we did one second, then we did two second delay on each of them. And then we said, all right, once we get into larger programs, we'll probably gonna, we're probably going to need some global variables in that um, if we state our global variables up here, we'll only have to change the value once up here, and every instance in our program from then on in will be changed below. So we did that for our integer for the LED pin. We changed it from 13 to 12. And now we've created a difference on our on and off delay. And by changing these values then they change the global variables below. So we can upload this guy again, and this should be on for five seconds, and then off for two seconds. Beautiful. All right, guys, so play around with these guys. Uh, and again, in order to learn this really well, um, try and do what I'm doing. Like, try and go through and, like, grab a, grab a screen capture and try and go through and explain it to your computer screen. The best way that I learn this stuff is just by doing the videos. Half of the video is for you and half of it is for me. In creating a video, it just solidifies everything in my brain. I can, I can see right away where I'm going to make uh, my mistakes. Um, so go through, you could copy and paste this um, and drop it into your program, but in doing so, you're not going to learn anything. So go through, make the mistakes, change the variables here, right? So change these values all the way through. Um, Solidify this lesson, then move on to the next one. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. We'll see you on the next video.